Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new Asus RT AX92U Wi-Fi 6 mesh router system. Now I want to focus on the software today. Uh, this is actually going to be two videos technically. Today I'm going to talk about the user interface that you can access via a PC or Mac system. There is also a mobile version of this that I might cover in a future video. But the second part of this video coming hopefully live before the end of the week is going to be my speed test of this device utilizing a Wi-Fi 6 device. But for now, I just want to do a software overview and technical review of this software. Because I say software, this is a graphical user interface that allows users, even with a very low technical knowledge, to be able to get to grips with their router system and set their device up the right way. So. What I've done is I've connected a few devices to the router system. You can see three clients. I've connected a USB device here, and we've got wireless and wired LAN connections. None of these are Wi-Fi 6. I'm saving that for the next video. But what I want to do is go through some of the things it can and can't do and give you some idea about why I was so impressed with this system in my original review. So this is the user interface you see. And once you've connected to the wireless access system, as you can see here, you just connect to it with your password. You can then access this user interface just by search, uh, just putting into the URL router.asos.com. If you're using an older browser, then you may have to add http dot, dot slash slash or not dot dot slash slash colon slash slash. But this is what you see. And remember, there is the mobile app as well. Now, once you're into the device here, you can see that the um, the WAN IP there, that's the predominant IP there for the internet connectivity. And right now I have this device connected to uh, an ISP router, the internet service provider router. But all the tra traffic that I've set up today is going via this router. I've enabled WPA2 personal security, but you can change that security as you see fit to a number of different tiers. You can rename the SSID very, very easily and even change the encryption system along with the encryption key. You can even remove the key or change it ad hoc whenever you choose. You can also set it up to be different kinds of connectivity with five gigahertz smart connect versus tri-band if you so choose. You can even set up each one of these connections, 2.4, five gigahertz and the second five gigahertz network to be their own independent networks for different users. You can set up a guest network that we'll talk about later on, and you can quickly and easily access all the different devices in your network. Now, I have set up a second AI mesh node in my environment right now. And what would happen here is it will search for that second node. Now, the node was set up very, very briefly in, um, in preparation for this video. And what you can see here is it's found the other node, but the wireless connectivity here indicates that it's not quite as close as it would like. So for now, I can click that button and it will ask if I want to add the second mesh node to my system. Now, ideally you want at least three bars. So make sure you set up the device in an area where you've got at least three bars of coverage. And that means the overlap will be good enough that when you're moving through your house or your business or where I am right now in a building site, what you can do is you can then walk away from one mesh point and when you make the switch onto the other one, the dip between them is very, very small. But for now, I'm going to add the second mesh point to my network and it will add this directly. Um, it's saying right now is weak, it might result in a bad connection and it's asking me to move that mesh node. So that tells you that it's not strong enough for it to support it. So once again, we will get that connected for the speed test, don't worry. But that's nothing to do with the speed test of the device, it's just me not setting them up close enough in preparation. So also from this, you can see the connected devices here, and you can see my phone is available here, and there's two desktop devices connected to this. We've got the desktop device that I'm on right now over Wi-Fi, and it even lists the kind of connectivity I'm utilizing. With my phone here, this is a Pixel uh, 2 XL um, connected here via 5 gigahertz, and that doesn't use Wi-Fi 6, as well as another connection wirelessly, which is this laptop that we're recording the video on. And we have a different desktop interface here connected as well. Now, if we go to that desktop, we can see a lot more information. You can create schedules for the connectivity of that device. You can make sure that it's locked to certain IPs and MAC addresses and make sure that this device can only connect on these settings. You can even completely block internet access on that device. Now, if we look 
moving a little forward, we can look at the other wireless device, which is my phone, and if we look at that, we can see that it will list the manufacturer by reverse engineering that MAC address. And after a while, it will find what it is. You can set up a profile for this device moving forward and decide, in this case, it's an Android mobile. Then you can just click apply, and then that has now been applied. If I wanted to, I could set up a schedule where um, if I go into the schedule settings, I could administer that this device can only have internet access at given times of day, and I can set it up that it can only go to certain websites. If we go down, we can see that the USB 3 and USB 2 port have their own dedicated user interface here. Now, although it was a USB 3 stick, I've connected it to the USB 2 port to see what would happen. If we click here, we're able to see that we can either enable the media server output, so the contents of this drive is then shared over the local area network, and you can go with Disk Wizard to check the disk for a number of different settings. And remember, this device can also be used as a download manager, which means that the device will download from certain websites directly onto this USB stick. There are loads of different options here of things you can do with a USB connected device, even enabling everything as far as Apple Time Machine to back up via your wireless network via the router onto a connected drive, which is pretty cool. And with the download manager allowing you to create download tasks where the router will make sure all of that, uh, those files that you download, be they uh, HTTP, BT, um, RSS, and you know your podcasts and more can be managed by the router. Wireless dongles, are connecting printers, connecting very bespoke um, other server devices and network places, and of course AI Disk allowing you to make that drive network accessible over the internet as well. If we go to the network map there at the top, we can go back to, back to all of those options there, and loads of information is readily available to us with each of those frequencies having their own MAC address readily available. The guest network allows us to create a sub-network within our device, where if we've got friends or family staying with us, we can assign it so that this guest network only gives them access to the things that we want, and we can create a sub-network whereby these people have access to the internet, but only certain sites, maybe with safety protocols or scheduled connections. You can use this for guests, friends, even children who are meant to be doing their homework. And it's a handy little option. Now, AI Protect is the ability to prevent, you know, malware or mischievous content or mischievous websites mucking up your host systems. Now, remember, this is not a subscription system. This is all included with the device. So whether you want to set up those parental controls, which allow you to set up time management and web filters that block certain kinds of website or different times of day for when they can access it. This is a lovely little feature that a lot of other, both mesh and standard router providers, charge people for on a subscription service. On top of that, you can set up blocking and prevention measures that will block certain websites at the router level in case the connected devices are still trying to access it. And with malicious site blocking, you can go one step further with updated lists and actually add sites manually if you so choose. And there's loads of other options all the way along with a whole security advisor where you can look at recommendations and dangers for you to set up. I'm willing to bet two of those are the fact that my password is the word password. And you can rescan your network whenever you feel like it and rescan the wireless network uh, device to learn more. Now, QoS, or quality of service, allows you to assign strength and um, connectivity to certain devices and priorities. So say, for example, right now, the device I'm on wirelessly is going to be showing connectivity on all of these devices via the bandwidth monitor. Now, in the background here, I have my phone running a 1080p 60 frames per second video on YouTube. That's why right now we're seeing lots of raw data use in the download happening right now. Also on the PC, I can run a Google speed test and what you'll start to see is a small spike there as you can see while I run the speed test on the desktop PC. And this is running a Google test on a separate machine. So this is real time access and what you can do is assign quality of service to ensure 
that different devices have priority. So you can say that I want these devices or these different um, utilizations to have priority. And again, there is no subscription service. This is all included for free. And this setting here is one for those that want to keep a real eye on the websites that are being used. And this enables you to see every website that's accessed through the router. Trust your relatives and maybe you'll never need to use this, but you never know. So Traffic Analyzer is much like what we've already seen, but this will show what exactly has been accessed over time. There's a little tutorial, as you can see here on screen, and you can see the amount of data and how it's been used and by what device, with real-time statistics that label how devices have been used, what's been used, where the loopholes are happening, and where all the data is being consumed. You can then break these down to individual devices if you so choose, and you can see upload, download, as well as wireless and wired connectivity to see how and what in your network is consuming the bandwidth, and then you can use that information to um, apply priority on different devices at certain times of day, as well as if someone's saying they're not using the internet, this will tell you otherwise. Now, when I do my speed tests using Wi-Fi 6 and a Wi-Fi 6 enabled device, or 802.11ax, I will be screen recording this screen as well to show you guys exactly how much and where the data is being used on the network. Game Boost enables a bunch of other services bundled in with this device. So along with gamer-supported uh, gamer AI protection that we've already seen, you can also enable it that the quality of service will automatically give LAN connectivity, that's wired connectivity, priority of service. But more than that, you can set it up that your wireless gaming rig, maybe you're using an Alienware laptop or something, you can assign that device to have priority when um, a smaller ping as possible is essential to make sure you're not going to get noobed. And WTF or WT fast or what the fast um, allows you or um, to create um, a kind of gamer inspired VPN to create that private network. Now this is all included. This um, gamers uh, protected network or private network isn't a full subscription, but a great deal of the subscription is included with this device. But it does encourage you to upgrade to the full version, which I'm not going to cover in this video. USB applications that we've already looked at here will allow you to run different things on the USB and AI Cloud allows you to synchronize uh, with cloud devices and cloud services with that USB device. And again, there are mobile apps to go into more detail there and I'll probably do a separate video, one video covering all of those apps. Now, let's wrap things up with the more analytical side of things, hence why these are listed as advanced settings. And this is where you would start to enable all those extra settings. You can ramp up a lot of different features here for a more bespoke network, but I strongly advise you do not play with these settings unless you know what you are doing. The same goes for land area network or land devices with loads of different priority settings and more, all featured in the top at tabs. I should have mentioned the Wi-Fi system also has a bunch more of those added as well. And all of these can be used in a professional or casual capacity to your heart's desire. Next, we've got the wireless access network, which allows you to set up the internet connectivity of this device. And again, you can change the security settings to fit your own needs. Now, this device does also support smart devices like Google Home and Amazon Alexa, with the latter much, much more supported, with the Google one requiring a little bit more patching with things like if this, then that, or IFTTT. And you can use it as a pass-through system to speak to your Amazon Alexa to perform certain security protocols or just standard processes via the voice to the router, all accessible right there. The rest of the network configurations are fairly self-explanatory, with the firewall system built in, although it's not utilizing any of the growing popular ones like, um, what is it called, PFSense, an OS router, you can't utilize and install those um, uh, VP, uh, those VMs we've seen on devices such as the QNAP Guardian. This device puts a lot more of its priority in quality of service and your internal network rather than the external. There's still lots of settings there, 
but I think some of the support of, um, of more of those bespoke freeware uh, supported router firewalls may have been desirable to a number of you. Now, this is important because this is where you look at how you want the device to be set up. Because although you can access all of this user interface and create all of those firmware updates and restore settings, from here you can decide whether you want this to be just a plain old access point, whether you want it to be a main mesh router and disabling the Wi-Fi on your primary router device from your ISP, or if you need the device to just clone a connected router system. But finally, AI Mesh Node allows you to turn your mesh point into a mesh for another system. One of the areas which I haven't really touched on here and touched on in the hardware review was that if you own some of the more modern Asus routers, you can connect different mesh router systems. They don't have to be the same mesh device. Up until now, the majority of mesh systems have insisted that every mesh node is exactly the same hardware, and Asus have broken that a great deal by allowing you to mix and match more of their modern router systems so you can have a much more powerful primary router and using these mesh nodes in conjunction with it. And I've, you've got a system log that should have detailed pretty much everything I've done so far. But of course, all of these settings here from port forwarding to open, st open stuff up, uh, enabling let, um, uh, lagging of uh, ports and connections or port trunking are all conducted here. And these are ones that again, a lot of you gamers or more technically experienced users will utilize. And a number of these options here are in a far more chewable friendly fashion here in the general access point. And finally, network tools here allows you to create some of the more user-friendly setup options that a number of you that have been using network devices or old routers for a number of years will access. But that's really it. It is a very, very useful tool that has been presented, I would say slightly dated in design, I think, with the flowcharts and the color scheme here, but there's no denying Unlike a lot of other mesh routers, which only give you a mobile app, which is incredibly limited due to the limited space and touchscreen, it's great to have an option to use both. If you do want to use the mobile app, you can either go to your respective app center or download them from a 3D barcode here, or download them to your PC and or Mac and install them that way, which would be fantastically counterintuitive. From here, we can see connected users or the guest network, and moreover than that, you can decide what you want to do with the mesh network if you want to disconnect from the internet or a leave it has a network and internet system. And from here, we've got that USB drive. So that is it. That is this software. I've gone through as much as I can. Uh, if you do want to update the firmware, you can either click the firmware update here or go into those settings here below. But apart from that, this has been the software overview and review of the Asus RT-AX92U mesh Wi-Fi system. I personally really, really enjoy this and I'm looking forward to doing the speed testing. If I had to critique it, first and foremost, the design, a little bit dated, but that's hardly the end of the world. And secondly, the idea that a number of the more modern um, firewall systems, once again, such as OS Router, and um, uh, PF Sense are not present here. And I think the idea that you might be able to bolt those on at a later date would be quite nice. But apart from that, I can't really fault the device. And I'm gonna move over now to the wireless test of this device. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you are looking for a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, right now, this is my favorite. Had it been released a little sooner, it would have been in my top three mesh Wi-Fi router systems of 2019. Sadly, it came out a little too late to be featured in that list, but I do recommend you check out that list nevertheless, and I look forward to talking about this device more in the coming months. I'll see you guys next time.